We've had some amazing solar storming over the holiday break, including some gorgeous aurora over New Year's, and we're set to have yet another solar storm. Those stories and more in the news this week. Welcome to 2017, everyone. We've had some amazing solar storming over the holiday season that's even lasted into the new year, and now we have a new coronal hole that's rotating into the Earth strike zone that should bring us more aurora and continue the uh, holiday festivities. Switching to your M flare threat meter, you can see things continue to be extremely quiet. We did have a couple flares that popped near the C class level back around the 27th, but that died down very quickly, and things continue to be very quiet. This is good news for you GPS operators who want things to be really, really quiet for good uh, operation, but you amateur radio operators, you need that solar flux level to be up a bit higher, so you're kind of struggling right now getting enough uh, ionization in the upper atmosphere to allow for signal propagation and unfortunately this trend is going to continue. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see we did have some activity back starting before Christmas that kind of lingered in through that holiday, then things began to quiet back down and then picked up again through New Year's. And both of these storms have brought some gorgeous aurora, not huge shows mind you, and not down to really low latitudes, but still some pretty aurora nonetheless through the holidays and we are gearing up for some more. And over the holidays, the aurora have been beautiful. The storms haven't been monstrous, so the aurora haven't reached really low latitudes, but they've still given us some spectacular shows, like this gorgeous aurora in Finland, and in Norway, and some in Sweden. It reached down to Scotland. We've had gorgeous aurora in Northumberland, as well as other parts in England. Now moving a little bit further to the west, we had beautiful aurora in Iceland. And over the pond, we got to Manitoba, Canada, and views in Saskatchewan, and Edmonton, as well as central Alberta. We've also brought it down into the states. We had gorgeous views in Minnesota, and it even reached clear down to Nebraska for a short while. And down in the south, we had gorgeous views in Tasmania. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And you can see the sun is pretty sleepy right now on the backside. We have one uh, active region that's rotating back into Earth view right about now. It might bring us a little elevated solar flux, but probably not any solar storms. Outside of that, we really don't have much. We've got a tiny little coronal hole that's probably not even going to make it to Earth view. And then we've got another one that's just now rotating onto the backside. Outside of that, we do have an active region that is growing on the backside right now, but we'll see how it continues to unfold. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating that high speed wind hitting us from that coronal hole that's rotating into the Earth's strike zone. So NOAA is anticipating about a 65% chance of a major storm at high latitudes starting around the 4th and the 5th. Now mid latitudes we're only expecting about active conditions with about a 30% chance of a minor storm. But these conditions will continue possibly in through the weekend because of the, the shape of this weird coronal hole that's giving us this fast wind. So you amateur radio operators expect to have some issues easily through the weekend if you're planning contests that could be impacting as this high speed wind begins to wane. As far as your aurora photographers go, you do get another chance for some aurora. I don't know how strong this uh, particular storm is going to be, but it should be at least as good as the last ones we've had. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, of course everything is in the green when it comes to solar flares. That's the way it's been for a while and that's the way it's going to continue. Of course the uh, solar flux is still marginal, so you amateur radio operators, you're still struggling. So the space weather this week continues to be active because of the fast wind from these coronal holes. So you aurora photographers, don't put your cameras down yet because we have yet another chance for aurora in through the weekend. Now you amateur 
radio operators, you're just going to have to keep struggling while this solar storm blows through. You may have some really interesting contacts, uh, especially in the gray line, because propagation gets to be kind of magic in those regions during these solar storms. But outside of that, you're going to have some issues uh, because of the storming and also because the solar flux is low. You GPS operators, on the other hand, should be loving life because the flare con uh, continues to be completely quiet. We don't have any issues there. Just make sure you stay out of the auroral zones when you want to be flying your drones or piloting anything through GPS. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.